Hey, what's up everyone? DJ Sturf here, and I'm going to go through these security breach images, these leaked on purpose images, these teaser images given by Steel Wool and Scott to Daco on his WWF charity stream. Now, I go all the way back to when WWF meant Worldwide Wrestling Federation, so I always think of WWF as that. But this is the World Wildlife Fund. I remember when they were contending over the rightful owner of WWF, and WWF became WWE. So now that is what we have, a WWE and a WWF. But anyway, WWF, very good organization. So, all right, let's get to the images here. First of all, here we have the logo. It's a very, very polished floor, like good, good grief. That's that min-wax finish, I guess. But uh, you have Glamrock Chica here doing her best Cindy Lauper impression. She looks a lot like Cindy Lauper, I think, uh, on this. It's cartoony almost to the point of being unrecognizable compared to the actual model. And you'll see later on in some of these pictures that the depictions of the cartoony style don't match up with some of the portraits or the other styles that you see throughout. Um, but anyway, the cutouts and this logo, for example, you have Roxy looking really, really different, almost like a cat, almost like a tabby cat. And uh, But you have its welcoming place, extended open hand, come on in, uh, and then a laid back Montgomery, who might not be so laid back. And I'll, I'll, I'll go through that opinion as well. But uh, let's also check here, go through, check the gamma on this uh, here. If you brighten it like crazy with the gamma, gamma adjust, full life, there's nothing really here. Nothing I can see. If you see anything, just let me know. All right, next one. <laughs> Let's take the, the gamma off. Here's the picture right here. It's called Utilidors or Utility Doors, basically. There's a fork and knife on the left side. Uh, in the uh, Basically an entryway to the kitchen, most likely. And actually, let me turn on the gamma already because that is really dark anyway. But that's that was the image as it was. Uh, the fork and knife, it almost looks like a CD, CD-ROM or whatever, uh, but it's a, a, a fork, a plate, and a knife. So it's likely the entryway to the dining room. And that might be on the left side. So you see down the hallway where you have the circle going to the left and then the circle with the L going to probably the lobby, probably not laser tag because it's called Phaser Blast Arena. And you, you can tell from a few things that that's what it's called. Uh, phaser Blast, I don't even know. <laughs> it's, it's Phaser Blast, but uh, you combine the phaser and laser. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, th I think that it's probably the entryway or the lobby or, or whatnot. Uh, and anyway, the other side is probably, probably to the, the restaurant or dining area. Maybe in the teaser trailer where it was just more of a generic diner area or whatever, maybe that's where it's going to. I don't know. Uh, but we'll see, I guess. There are also a lot of wires. It reminds me of a server room. Uh, this is basically an underground corridor. You don't want to walk on that grating with high heels. It's just you would get st stuck and probably twist your ankle. Grade 1 sprain at the very least. This is the grade 1 sprain hallway. And you see on the floor here, this reminds me of that loading dock area when you had that RTX tech demo, basically. So I think if you backed up, you might be in that loading dock area where you had on, on, on the right side, you would have Vanny and her shadow in one of the doorways there, all creepily. So anyway, I think that's probably what's going on there, but uh, nothing I can really see with the gamma adjust either way, but worth checking. All right, cool. Next one. All right, you have the Phaser Blast Arena. So this is as it is. Oh man, a laser tag. That brings back a lot of memories. Good grief. Uh, laser tag got messy when it was competitive or for high scores at a, at a location or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> this is a red versus green. You have two bases, basically, the, those planets, and then a mid, a mid base. So if you're playing Capture the Flag, you would go to the other base, shoot some target on the planet or on some something orbiting the planet, maybe. I, I don't know. And then you go back to the midpoint, and you shoot a target there, and you get a point because you technically captured the flag. Uh, and it, it, unless you get hit. If you get hit, then that resets. You've got to go back to your base and start all over again. So uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's probably what it is here, and that's how it's set up. But I guess we'll see. And, and knowing Steel Wool, I'm guessing we probably will be playing laser tag in this. I'm expecting we're going to be playing uh, laser tag, mini golf, probably go-karting as well. Like, Freddy Kart was always kind of a hype idea to me. 
and that would be really cool if we actually had a good go-kart game in, in here. That would be pretty crazy. It's a, uh, there's, a, there's a chance that there's none of that. I mean, it could be a guided tour like Sister Location, or it could just be a game where you have to make quick action decisions with the key on the keyboard when things are panning out. Or uh, I'm pretty sure that's not it. Uh, I'm, I'm still expecting that this will be a candidate for game of the year for sure. And uh, yeah, I mean, these, these pictures show the depth of what's been put into this game so far. It's just we have to piece together what we have to do, and I'm sure that will probably be pretty intuitive because last game that Steel Wool did with Scott was pretty well done. All right, so talking about help wanted. It's just the QA is the thing I caution on, is you gotta make sure it's really, 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 really tested out the gate. And if it's, if it's really nicely presented from version 1.0, you're doing yourself a big favor. So that would be my main advice because there were a lot of bugs with Help Wanted and there still are a lot of bugs left in Help Wanted, but they did a pretty good job fixing a lot of the bugs that I sent in for sure. So uh, I commend them on some level for that. At the same time, if they get rid of the bugs up front, that's doing themselves a big service down the road. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, much more polished product and yeah, sentiment is a, a definite plus for uh, developers. All right. Uh, Glamrock Chica is, is more prepared than Glamrock Freddy here for a laser tag. Let me crank up the gamma. Here you go. I don't even know. But she's not all that well prepared. If you, if you look in some of the other pictures later down the road, you'll see she's not actually all that well prepared. But uh, Glamrock Freddy has that kind of doofy expression that's almost like a branding image. That is just him pointing up with one finger in the air with his tiny top hat on his helmet, his space helmet. I mean, maybe Freddy in Space 2 is going to be more relevant after, after after this game comes out. I don't know. Hopefully so, because I, I heard the tester was pretty cool on that game. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Glamrock Chica basically ready to go for that laser tag, but she is not all that focused. All right. Um, she will be one-upped by Roxy especially. All right. Um, but anyway, the whole branding image just doesn't... I don't know. It's it's silly. It's all serious too. Like some of the pictures on Glamrock Freddy's wall make me get it. It gives me a different impression of Glamrock Freddy. All right. Um, but anyway, we'll we'll see what this is. If you go back all the way here, there's like that lounge area that you had in I think the first demo, the the tech demo. Um, and I'm guessing that's probably it's probably the arcade. It's probably the Fazcade, and that's probably where it leads. All right. So. There's probably some stairwell or whatever entryway to the laser tag arena. I never felt all that comfortable running on those ramps. Like there are a lot of ramps here as well, but uh, the laser tag arena ramps always just felt really flimsy and I was about to break through them. It was probably plywood or something like that. You just you run up this ramp and hope that it doesn't break through while you're trying to you know, go to the next floor. Um, but anyway, <laughs> some of the walls have cutouts. You can sneak in a shot. Uh, it was annoying because with laser tag, you had rules against people covering the, the sensors on their vests, but you'd have people walking around like this, like they'd be they'd be holding the gun, but um, they would they would just be covering all the sensors on their vests, and you couldn't get a shot off at all because they'd be backed up against the wall like this, and it's like oh I got you, and it's like really like <laughs> so anyway anyway that was a long long time ago, but a lot of memories with laser tag. A lot of those laser tag arenas had DDR machines in a small arcade and and. There were some places that were like huge laser tag arenas that I went to as well. So I don't know that those are things of the future, but they certainly were interesting things of, of, uh, of my past. So anyway. All right, next one, El Cheap. It seems like a Mexican restaurant here by the decor. It could be Tex-Mex, I don't know, but everything in the imagery outside of this as well screams Southwest. Like all the neon lighting screams Miami, but everything in the scenery screams Southwest. And whether it's in Utah, I don't know. Maybe we're going to Hurricane Utah with some of this stuff. But I don't know about a place that would be such a big complex in Hurricane Utah. That seems more of a distant, kind of out of, in, in the middle of nowhere place for there to be something like this. But I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe we're trying to go to Utah here. But anyway, uh, the restaurant here, probably Mexican themed, though you do have the futuristic tie-ins here. You have cacti, but you also have the planets on the tables, the centerpiece on each table with the rocket ship orbiting those planets. 
And it's just kind of an interesting touch, like a futuristic touch to a Mexican restaurant area. Like it's a little, it's a little alcove in the big old plaza in the mega pizza plex. But um, I'm anticipating you'll probably have like all sorts of Mexican food here. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what you can do in this area and others. There was one thing in a previous trailer. I think it was the second trailer, was it? It might have been the gameplay trailer. I, I don't know. Uh, but you had the staff robot with the sombrero on, and it was a, a it was kind of like a service robot. So you have a waiter, but it's a robot. And uh, they, I don't know. So you, you have the really cute wet floor robot with the bear ears. And uh, interesting, though, too, uh, Scott had a feedback left from, it was a feedback given by Scott, I should say, uh, for a job called Friendly But Annoying Clean Bot. So I'm guessing even though this robot's cute, the robot's even probably gonna follow you around or annoyingly talk to you or talk to you too much or something like that. But we'll see. I'm hoping that you can interact with them and I'm guessing you probably can by that job name on voices.com. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't even know. Um, maybe those service robots will be reckless. Maybe the wet floor robots will be annoying. Who knows? Guess we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we have doilies up top. I was talking with, uh, or I should say, I was emailing GG Games about it, and he saw Glamrock Chica in one of those pink doilies. The other ones I saw, I, I thought I saw a pizza slice, a microphone, uh, something that looked like El Cheap and, uh, and all that. And you have the piñata over here for sure. And then almost like a sun-looking thing. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see what happens there. Uh, you also have the Faz's Fizzy Station, and you have water. Something that looks like Coca-Cola, but one of these has got to be soda -roni. There's probably like a, a pink lemonade type thing, like a, a Sanka or <laughs> what is it, a Fresca or something. Uh, then a Sprite clone and... I hope this is just pure hot sauce. Like it's just capsaicin flakes that you pour in and then you pour water on it to like dilute it a tiny bit and then that would be really painful. So anyway, that's probably not it. You have a menu up here. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's about it to this section. It's a red and black tile area, slightly different from the other areas of food and all that. Uh, but anyway, we'll see what this is. I, I think this is uh, air hockey over here, but I can't really make out exactly what it says uh i i it almost looks like oive <laughs> like I, I can't tell but I don't, I don't think that's what it is uh but anyway yeah it's interesting okay so that's this area and i'm sure the arcade is probably back here all right cool get some cool food here all right <laughs> what's next what's next this one right here. All right, so this is the counter to the Phaser Blast Arena. And you see the total cost there. I'm guessing that's probably a dollar sign and then a two digit number with all that. So it's probably not breaking the bank completely, but who knows, maybe inflation really took hold during these years and maybe this is way in the future, so it doesn't really matter that you're paying $620. I can't read the exact numbers on it, but I'm hoping that first one's a dollar sign instead of a digit because three digits for laser tag is crazy. Uh, <laughs> I remember I used to I used to play laser tag at two different locations that had really nice deals during various hours of the week. Uh, one place was called FunWorks and they had unlimited laser tag for five dollars Tuesdays from six to nine p.m. And boy, was that a good deal because one game of laser tag during the week was something like 550 or 599 or something like that. Uh, it was it was more expensive to play one game any other time during the week ex instead of playing three hours straight. So uh, that, those those are fun times, though. So anyway, that place went bankrupt very quickly, unfortunately. That was a fun place, though. All right. So phaser blast counter uh, again, the cartoony drawings. Uh, it, just Roxy looks like a cat here. It's just the tail doesn't. The tail is definitely lupine, but um, the the face just it just looks like a tabby cat. So I don't know. You know, shout out to Candy, I guess. <laughs> and then you have the same branding image here. The color schemes are interesting. That Glamrock Freddy has a completely unique color scheme, almost like bold tones as opposed to 
the wild green leopard and pink zebra on Glamrock Chica with the weird ear triangle so she can't hear anyone. She's got those green gloves, the pink forearm guards on, on like, you know, football <laughs> shoulder pads. And then you have uh, also here, Roxanne Wolf, very prepared for laser tag. She's probably the high scorer of the bunch, but she's got those purple zebras uh, all over. So she's much more purple themed, but also has the pink on the accessories. Uh, but she's actually nicely themed. I kind of like that. But the pink, purple, and green are very prevalent on the sidekicks. So Montgomery as well. So Monty, almost like a shy, reluctant expression. Like, oh, shucks, that type of thing. Like the the southern hospitality, oh, man, I don't want to shoot you with lasers, that type of thing. That's the impression I get from this picture. But again, like some of the other things just remind me of like an aggressive gator. Like, I, I think there's something up with Montgomery. Uh, and the, the, the depiction is not sound on this one. So anyway, but then you have purple and green. It looks like, is that a gator pattern? <laughs> that would be, that would be interesting. It's not a leopard for sure on this one, but I don't know. It's not quite the scales, I guess, but maybe that's what it's meant to be. I think that's probably what it's meant to be, is the gator is wearing gator print. Uh, that, that would be kind of fun. Um, okay, so then you have the bold tones, almost patriotic, the deep red, royal blue, and like whitish type of, it's probably metal, but it looks like a whitish set of spikes and all that, and it's almost like a patriotic type of you know, the leader and then all the rest of the sidekicks and they get the other colors in the, in the theme. Maybe Monty resents that. I don't know. Maybe Monty, when the voice clip said, both of you, 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 like, you will do what I want, you will get what I want or whatever, or you will get me what I want or something like that. Uh, both of you, <laughs> uh, or both of you will burn or whatever. Um, you can go back to that second trailer for that. But if that's Monty, which that voice reminds me of some something that an alligator <laughs> cartoony character might sound like that would be interesting if Monty's trying to get Glamrock Chica and uh, and Roxanne Wolf to either get Gregory or get rid of uh, Glamrock Freddy uh, you know maybe he wants to be the top dog I just don't know I don't know so I guess we'll see there and maybe Monty's completely innocent and completely oh shucks like like the the picture here seems to depict, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really, I'm not buying it in full. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens, I guess. <laughs> I think there's anything else here. Let's check the gamma. Anything. It's definitely well lit by neons for sure. You got the green and pink neons on this too. And then the, the logo here. And this is actually almost like a shorthand logo. It almost looks like a FAS token or something like that. I don't know, but if it's so futuristic, I'm not sure they would necessarily have tokens. But that reminds me of arcades way, way back as well. Just get tons of tokens and that's about it. Never have to get another token again because you bought like thousands of dollars of tokens. <laughs> All right, next one. Here we go. I hope I didn't miss anything on any of these, but I'm sure I, I'm sure I did. So if, if you find something that I didn't, then you can comment. Uh, and here, this area here is a little, little more, a uh, little more subdued, but it, it looks really fancy. Like it looks really impressive. And I guess this is probably the entryway to the raceway. Yeah, it is. Um, it, I, it almost looked like a glass front. So this area right here almost looked like a, like a glass front. And then this this being the door, but this is actually just an advertising thing right here. And then this is going to be the the gateway, the entryway to that race arena. So Roxy Raceway. I actually said uh, I think I said Roxy's Raceway or something like that in the in the previous one, just kind of guessing at the title. But that's uh, Roxy Raceway. Maybe I said Roxy. I don't know, but close enough. I, I was pretty close on that. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, there's a go kart mounted to the wall. There's steering wheels or tires. There are all sorts of things. Uh, there's a motorcycle here. It's almost definitely a ride. You'll see in another another one there an, another one that there will be a rocket ride as well. So a kids ride. You probably put in a quarter or, or whatever the currency is at the time. Put in a few Faz tokens, 
and then you can ride that and you watch your kid ride and then when they're bored then you can bring them out of the raceway so as they wait I guess over here I don't know if this is a display like what wheels you can use or whatever but it's kind of more of a display uh, kind of like hey look what you can do I don't know but it's, it's right near the entryway so that's at least my estimation see this go-kart mounted up top here that's kind of cool just hopefully it doesn't fall so these need to be a little more beefy in terms of the uh, what the rebar I mean that that's just they you have to be really secure on that you don't want that falling down that's a lawsuit waiting to happen if if that's not secure um, especially if it's in the southwest anywhere near a fault line so anyway uh, this would probably okay you have ATMs here for sure you have a doorway here in between probably for staff and then over here maybe a fast ticket redemption or something uh, can I tell the text here let's see um, I don't know. It also could be a photo booth or, or it could be a vending machine. I just I can't tell on that. Uh, and then a bunch of trophies on the left. It almost looks like Roxanne Wolf's head is coming out of that trophy. I'm pretty sure that's just a wall decal, but not fully sure on that. And that's a huge trophy. Good grief. Like, <laughs> you almost fit that go kart in it. <laughs> like, that's that's how you put your go kart in after you're done. You put it in that big old trophy from Roxy Raceway. All right. <laughs> And that's, that's about it for this one, I think. Oh, man. All right. Cool. Next one. Oh, man, we got Monty's Gator Golf. Yeah, this one actually should be really cool. It should be really cool. Um, <laughs> all right. It, it, looks, it looks super fun and, and interesting here. This also over here, you have the door that can open up, and then you can ride the golf balls. But this is the, uh, it's called the sub lobby, is the image subtitle of this or whatever. And it looks really weird on the floor. Like, let me change the, the gamma here. It almost looks like there's oil on the ground, like there was a leak from the raceway or something. I, I don't know. It could be carpet, but uh, it just looks like a spill. It looks like a wet spill. I don't know. But it, it looks like it matches the carpet here, so probably not. But I do like the Monty prints on the floor. That's actually really cool as well. Uh, you have a let's party pizza slice or whatever deep dish almost looking and what else you have this oh my goodness this right here like what the heck is this what kind of drop is that on is because there's a ball pit right next to it too or, or right under it uh, it's it's so steep I mean it's almost like GameStop stock half of the time now uh, it's like just like a vertical drop and we can't handle that like Mario it's almost like a pipe when you go through and then it's like you know, choo, 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 and then you go through and <laughs> you go to the ball pit or whatever. But I, it should be more sloped than this. What the heck is that? It's just a drainage pipe. Like, what? Oh, man. So, anyway, I don't know who designed that and if there's more slope. Maybe there is. There's a stairway leading back to the place over here. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm referring to this. This is just ridiculously sloped. I, I don't know. And then to a ball pit. So, Maybe a ball pit is uh, is going to be used for some kind of time travel or some kind of locational travel or teleportation or something like that. It could just be there and it's a ball pit. I don't know. But uh, if it's anything relating to uh, or any sort of allusion to into the pit, then it could go further than just being a ball pit. Um, anyway, that's really about it. I do like the, uh, the entire... Uh, Wait, how do you say the the ambiance of the area is and the ambulance of the area uh, <laughs> I don't even know yellowish green lighting here very thematic and uh, let's go to the next one this one uh, is actually is called Monty gold 2 but it's supposed to be golf um, and actually we can go to we can go to the uh, the next this one this is golf one but um chronologically 13 is going to go before 14 so let, let's start here actually um, so this is the this is the picture default there you see a bunch of the glam rocks a bunch of their pictures golfing on the wall oh another thing too like you look at you look at the previous picture here like are you gonna are you really gonna use a wedge here or is this like a is this a putter of the future I just don't know I, I noticed that too it's like man that's that's a beefy putter and Monty is Monty is, you know, going all in on his shots. I don't know. I have to bank it off the wall with your Monty. But typical obstacles all here. You have hole 13, par 4. There's got to be more to the uh, 
more to the whole than this. I see there's a little like loop de loop here, so there's probably something more involved here because a par four is pretty beefy for a mini golf hole. Um, this right here, you have obstacles here, and yeah, cutouts and all that. Like it's it's pretty well designed mini golf course. So, like a lot of these mini golf courses are just basically poured concrete with astroturf on top or whatever, and you just you have at it and hopefully the concrete is smooth enough that the 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 ball travels true um, and hopefully it's not too sloped and I don't know if it's supposed to be sloped it should be sloped but if they're trying to make it flat a lot of times they, they don't succeed at that and interesting about this thing too one of the first things I was noticing uh, just looking at it was um, Monty barfing up a storm on that right wall it must be a fun fountain display to see him barf out gallons of water or whatever it is, it's probably not the cleanest thing either, knowing arcades and how they keep up the water. I mean, they have to put in a ton of cleaning everything all the time, and sometimes they just don't. Sometimes they neglect that, and the water becomes very, very nasty looking, and you have sometimes kids will jump in there or try to swim and all that. That is not good, <laughs> especially if the water is not clean. So anyway, would not recommend that at a real mini golf course with water areas and that type of thing but a lot of them do like a lot of the more involved ones have water areas and it's just more there for the for the scenery um not as obstacles for the for the holes so anyway that's about it for here uh there's a rib cage here and fish bones and all that so it's kind of like gator guts themed i guess you golf through monty's innards and you chill out with Ennard at the end, I guess. Um, so I don't even know. Palm tree there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Southwestern slash uh, tropical theme throughout. But uh, I guess you, you get a more Everglades type style with with the gator background. So that would make that would make some sense, I guess. Maybe Monty brings the Florida flavor. I don't even know. But anyway, uh, that was probably one too many. Let's see. Is that? No, okay, this one was the next one. Uh, this next one is the famous Glamrock Beauty Salon. And actually, let me really quickly, anything here with the gamma. It's nicely lit. I like the star glasses that Monty has too. They're kind of cool. They're different frame colors in a lot of them as well. Like you have a yellow here, a gold, and then you have an orange here. He's got that. Uh, that tight mohawk. I don't know whether they stuck that on or whether it's, it's his actual hair. I don't even know. Hair club for gators. I don't even know. And you got a nice belt here too. That's pretty cool. All right, next one. <laughs> the famous Glamrock Beauty Salon. And let's actually play with the gamma up front here. Here you have Roxanne Wolf on the the right wall here, like nearby here, and then you have. Um, Monty, you have Montgomery on the, the picture back here. I mean, both of them would have pretty iconic hairstyles if they were actual IRL characters or whatever. Uh, one has nice flowing, well-styled hair, kind of goes with the wind, almost like Storm from X-Men, I guess. And then you, you have uh, Monty with the, the mohawk. Got the mo. I don't know what this sign says. Uh, you please come back soon or please come back again or I don't even know can't tell the famous Glamrock Beauty Salon that gear up top maybe they style your hair in the shape of a gear I don't even know uh, you, you notice over here also you have another area and it looks like the puppet basically you have the poles here that have the black and white stripes almost look puppet-esque so maybe that's a, a little allusion to that and I guess let's let's go to the let's go to this one because this also relates. It's it's the same basic scene, just a little bit further down the road. This was actually number one in the series, and then number two was that last one you saw. Uh, and it looks almost like what do you call it? It's a powder brush almost over here. I don't know if this is the beauty shop over here, and then you have haircuts on the other side or something like that. But you have a play area for sure over here with the uh, the slide. Um, and when I said powder brush over here, like the beauty salon or beauty shop area or something like that. And then you have uh, yeah, the, the black and white poles that look like the puppet from that area. And it's just a play area probably while you get your hair did, you get your kids over here and they're chilling on like a rocket ship ride and a slide and that type of thing. I don't even know. Maybe the 
they could climb the poles or jump on the cacti as well, but that's probably not a great idea. Uh, also, note on the other one. All right, let's go back another. This one right here, you see the uh, the trash can. This one is super cool too. Like you have the top hat, you get the glam rock ready trash can. Like, <laughs> just eat all that trash. Um, interesting too as well. I saw this as well. I'm pretty sure this is not supposed to be a cross, but if that's a shout out to Jesus, then very cool, Scott. Um, I'm guessing it's probably not, but that's an that's an interesting picture part of it. And I know it's probably just a power pole or something, but interesting in the picture. Um, Hopefully there's something redemptive from this game. So, all right, <laughs> high hopes. And I still really think that this game could be game of the year for sure. I think it's gonna be a game of the year candidate. And uh, if it's not, then it should be, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see, see how it goes. Hopefully it's not a disappointment. I'm expecting it won't be. Um, I, I'm expecting great things from this. Okay, but the, the scenery here screams Southwest to me as opposed to Miami, which I was initially thinking with the, the neon and the, uh, the showy type thing. But you also have a road here. I don't know whether this is an artificial road or not, but it almost looks like real asphalt. So I don't know if you can have vehicles here or you have to cross the street to get here, but it's connected to the arcade basically, or it's really, really near it. So I'm thinking it's probably just an artificial road. Like you cross the street and it's like a desert beauty salon or whatever, where they cut your hair like a gear shape. I don't even know, but anyway, that's that's that one. Let's go back one. This is uh, the golf course that leads to this. This part leads to hole, holes 14, probably through 18. And if you see over here, there's a, there's an alligator here that you're probably this is probably hole 18 where all the vines are. Remember from the second trailer where you saw Monty walking in the the lit up vines. It's probably hole 18. Would be my guess. It could be hole one as well, but you have over here hole 14, which is like the trailer home hole, I guess. And uh, you have over here, and that's a par three. That's a pretty ambitious par three if you have to hit that up into here, unless it's a downward slope from here on. That would be a very hard par three. So maybe <laughs> maybe that's a tough one. Uh, it looks like benches over here. So you, you might have a long wait at, a, uh, at an arcade that has a mini golf course that's really, really packed on, say, a Friday or Saturday night. So weekends especially and evenings, uh, during spring and summer months especially, those are big times for mini golf courses. And man, a lot of memories of mini golf too. There were tournaments every, I, uh, was it every Tuesday? I think it was every Tuesday, but uh, won some prizes from, from winning those. Oh man, those were fun. Those were super fun. Um, anyway, but we used, we used putters, we didn't use wedges, so. <laughs> What else? You're you're in the mouth of Monty, so I guess you're you're probably walking, or sliding out to the next part of the course from 13. So you probably slide out through there. So you're you're golfing inside Monty for part of this, and then you slide out to holes 14 through 18. That would be my guess. And then there's a stairway up to the rest of the building, and there's probably the hologram of Monty here. I think I yeah I see it. You see it? There's a hologram of Monty here. You saw it in the second trailer, so the gameplay trailer not the RTX tech demo. But anyway, it, it looks really promising. It looks like you're gonna have to hide from Monty in some in some ways. You see also a barrel here. You see one of those in Monty's room as well, in this green room. We'll get to that, okay? Uh, oh yeah, let's uh, gamma adjust here. I think I already kind of did. Yeah, I did. But we'll go lower and really nothing. So it's probably just straight up images from the game. So yeah. All right, that one's done. This one right here is Roxy's green one, uh, green room. And you have over here on the arcade cabinet, Foxy and Funtime Foxy. And I don't know what the game is, but there's a Roxy plush on the cabinet, um, on the control basically. So you can't really see what it is. Uh, it almost looks like a fighter with what style cabinet. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But you have another Roxy plush here, another one here well-styled hair. Yeah, Roxy's hair is super cool. Uh, you got the keytar here, the actual keytar, a green keytar, and <laughs> yeah, I'm, man, that's, this is, I don't know, she's gonna synthesize us up, I guess, but it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, going back to like 80s style, I guess, but it's like a futuristic throwback to the 80s. It reminds me of some of the marketing of Dave and Buster's, like Dave and Buster's, 
they play music from the 80s and 90s or like early 2000s kind of for the nostalgia effect so the parents are like oh yeah i remember that song yeah i love coming here while their kids play and spend all their money <laughs> uh, I, I don't know but it's it, it's it's a it's an interesting clash i guess of of eras anyway she seems to be a gearhead for sure looks like there's a picture booth on the left side you can uh, get your selfie in a go-kart. There are wrenches on the wall. There's a final lap flag, so a checkered flag. There, there are two. Uh, um, a side art on the arcade. You, of course, have Foxy and Funtime Foxy, and otherwise it's just Roxanne Wolf. But kind of the Foxy character of this game. You know what I mean? So instead of Foxy or Funtime Foxy, we have Roxanne Wolf on this one. So not a, a Vulpine, but a, a Lupine in this case character. Uh, but anyway, with a keytar, I don't think it's an Axe Edge by Roland, but uh, it's definitely a keytar. So, all right, that's about it. I wonder if you can take that keytar at some point. Remember in the second trailer, Roxanne is running at you all bug-eyed and hands out or whatever. Maybe you take the keytar and uh, you have to run away from Roxanne because she needs it or something like that. Like you take something from her green room and then <clears throat> I just, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe you take her steering wheel. Maybe this is her prize steering wheel. Then notice the star is green as well. <clears throat> and her neons are lit up and all that. So Roxanne Wolf. Note that it doesn't say Glam Rock Roxanne or anything like that. <clears throat> Glam Rock Foxy. <laughs> but um, all right, that's, that's really about it for this room. It's pretty well kept. There's some debris on the floor for sure, but it's, it's scenic, I guess, or trophies, everything. So yeah, very, very involved room. All right. Next one, <clears throat> this is called Atrium. So in the main dining room or whatever, you see here you have Bonnie Bowl. So there's your Bonnie. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder if Bonnie will show up at some point. I mean, it, it doesn't look like the Bonnie that I would expect. And as well, you see Bonnie trying to spin the bowling ball on his finger. That would be a very good recipe for arthritis. Uh, but, but fortunately, Bonnie is an animatronic, so Bonnie can probably handle it. But Bonnie Bowl. So there's your Bonnie appearance. There's a gateway to Phaser Blast and Roxy Raceway and the Glamrock Beauty Shop and the Sodoroni area. That's probably the pit stop area of the Roxy Raceway, the second floor, as we saw in that second trailer. And then the stage area over here, you have reminiscent of the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 dining area. You have the, uh, the the plates, the cups, the party hats, the chairs. Scott, you can definitely market those chairs, and I'm hoping that those would be actually substantial. But the, the the solid ones, if these are all metal, then those would be pretty substantial. You could sell those, but it'd probably be a limited market, so maybe not. But and the same thing with Sodoroni and Moondrop and Chica of the Sea and all that, or the, the what the Chica Lemon Bar or whatever. <laughs> like I would get the Chica Lemon Bar as long as it, you know, didn't have something I was sensitive or allergic to or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, the cleaning robots over here again. Uh, this one looks like Freddy, and this one looks like Chica. So they might be themed over here, or maybe actually no, maybe maybe this is an arcade game. That that might be it. Maybe that's a, a racing game, and, and one's Freddy, one's Glamrock Chica. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, each table seats 14. There are balloons here, of course. They ha there have to be balloons in Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know if there's a happiest day in this one, but I mean, maybe visiting is supposed to be the happiest day for anyone who, vi anyone who visits or whatever. Uh, it looks like there is another floor as well, kind of a VIP area or something like that. Like you are... Uh, in a club area or something like that. I don't know. You got pizza ads here. Uh, you have the sun and the moon right here. I don't know if that's going to be a moon drop ad or uh, or, or what, but <laughs> sleepy time candy. We'll, we'll get to that. But anyway, this is the atrium. It's basically the center of all operations. All roads lead to the stage, of course, reminiscent of Five Nights at Freddy's 1, Cam 1B. And yeah, that's, that's really about it. I mean, yeah. Uh, over here as well, you're, you're seeing the beauty salon right here. I don't think that this is going to be across a street. I think that's going to be an artificial street, but I guess we'll find out. Maybe you have to cross the road. Hopefully you don't have to play chicken. Hopefully Chica has the chicken part taken care of already. 
because that <laughs> that's not that's not a thing to encourage. Um, anyway, so that's about it for this one. Uh, let's see any gamma. That's really bright. Oh, I mean, a lot of this game is really bright. And, and think how far Five Nights at Freddy's has come on this. And it's, yeah, it's crazy. All right, that one's done. Next one. Ooh, we got Glamrock Chica's green room. You notice it says Chica Chicken on here. It doesn't say Glamrock Chica. So they go by their stage names. I guess just thematically, they are the Glamrocks. So Glamrock Chica is also correct. Fitness through food. <laughs> so... This is where it's almost a rebranding of Chica as almost like a Jillian Michaels type, but like Jillian Michaels plus, hey, I like to eat a lot of variety of food, mostly pizza though. Like you see over here, <laughs> Glamrock Chica is face down, the, the plush is face down in a bunch of pizza boxes. And you have over here the photo op area. I don't know, like the, the reflective part is facing the other way, but it would be funny if you just turn this camera around and the, uh, the light reflector uh, the, the reflective umbrella, basically, and then you uh, you take a picture face down in a pile of pizzas. Like that could be part of the attraction, I guess. Um, you can see through the wall here. I don't know if this is a, another area or like this, this door might be closed here. Maybe that's a maybe that's the the handle for that. I don't know. So maybe that's a back room for the animatronics in case they get sick of dealing with hundreds and thousands of kids wanting them to sign everything or whatever. And I can tell these are not just like ear triangles. These are the, these are the earrings now, so that's that's clear. You got that Mylar balloon for Glamrock Chica. That would be super sick to see at Walmart or any other, like, you know, Target or any other, uh, any other store <laughs> that would sell them. Grocery stores, too, have them. Ice creams on the wall, pizza everywhere. And you have a security door here, like a very well, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 reinforced security door. Um, you have the cupcake here, and here, and I think here, and I think this one right here might be the candy, what is it, Squiggly, or something like that, I think it was in uh, FNAF VR, Help Wanted. Uh, a lot of the items here are re redone from, like carried over from Help Wanted. So you have Moondrop, for example, was it was a candy of Chica of the Sea, which was, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Like, there were several carryovers from that game here uh, in this game now. So I think this one's squiggly. It's it's one of the, I think, Curse of Dreadbear DLC candies or whatever. But anyway, she could go on fitness through food. Hopefully she can encourage healthy eating and all that. Because food's not a bad thing. Food's not a bad thing. You just have to be wise with caloric intake and macros and making sure you're getting the, the right the right nutrients. Uh, making sure you are keeping your body healthy, not underfeeding it yourself uh, and not overfeeding yourself to just, you know, a good balance. So, um, I know I've, I've had different times where I, I wanted to, like when I was lifting weights a little more back in, let's say, let's say like, you know, eight years ago when I wanted to get a little bulkier, I wanted to eat a whole lot more, but now that I'm doing running and joggling and DDR, I guess DDR was still a thing, but I wanted to get more bulky or whatever. Uh, but running especially, you want to get, you want to get like lean and mean, and that's that's also been something where I have to watch out that I'm not under eating, otherwise I don't have energy to run, and then I run slower because I don't have the right uh, nutrition. So it's it's a it's a balance that you have to get, and uh, there's a lot of trial and error sometimes. But anyway, it's it's a fun part of life though, a lot of balances and a lot of tasty food as well. So I, ca I can't fault Chica on that. That's one of one of the best things that um, that we do is eat. And uh, that's a very enjoyable part of life, or it should be, I think. So anyway, that's my food spiel. But uh, you have a posh chair here, the party balloons, uh, star mirror, all that. The green also, all the sidekicks have a green star up top. And that's really about it. But you have food and soda on the ground strewn about and a lot of uh, face down and, and just like flattened... Uh, Glamrock Chica plush around. I guess on the table, Glamrock Chica's standing up there, so at least one thing's in place there. And then a big old Glamrock Chica plush face down on the table here. So, all right. Ah, oh, man. And this right here, the neons, you have to have the table plugged in, so I wonder if there's something in the ground underneath where you just plug in that table, but that's, that's pretty posh. Pretty snazzy. Next one is... Ooh... This is one of the most interesting ones of the bunch, and for multiple reasons. Because Freddy is 
the with lead singer so there's a microphone here and it looks like this is probably just the camera right and then you have a photo op area or whatever where you can take a picture you have the all that uh, but you have a lot of glam rock freddy plush and actually one let's see oh there yeah, yeah all right we'll get to we'll get to monty after this one uh, cause Monty, Monty one is, Monty's one is super, actually, we'll, we'll go Monty before, let's go back to Glamrock Freddy after Monty, but this one right here, let's go Gamma Adjust on it. Backtracking a little bit, where's my mouse cursor, here we go. Alright, it almost looks like there's something written on that door, but it's probably just the pattern, and I'm adjusting Gamma so much that it's just particles, basically. It's the resolution limit that's causing the, the noise, basically. Doesn't look like anything really there. Okay. Next one. And notice here as well, I think this plush was changed. I think in the trailer there was a Glamrock Freddy plush. But anyway, maybe you can interchange those. I don't know. Maybe that's part of the gameplay. Who knows? Monty, this one is super interesting because look at this. You have the, the neon Montgomery Gator torn off the wall, not plugged in, or, you know, not powered. And it looks like there's, like, some wires or framework that's torn here, too. Also, the uh, the mid part of this sofa is thrown, and the barrel is, like, tipped over. It's just, man. You also have claw marks over here. See that? So there's something going on. There's there's a... The, the door is open over here. I think this might be a door. It might be a, a doorway to something else. I don't know. Um, I'm not fully sure on that part, but it could be another room where the glam rocks can go if they're annoyed or, or they, they need private time or something. I don't know. Maybe they're not that complex. I don't know. And then this arcade game here, I can't make out the text on it. Monty's something golf. Monty's Monty's uh, I mean, it would be cool if we were like mini golf, but I don't think it says that. Monty's I mean, if it were Gator Golf, that would make sense as well, but I don't think that's what it says. But anyway, it's a, a golf mini game, almost like Golden Tee, but it doesn't have the like Golden Tee controller or whatever. That would be a nice touch. You have the, again, uh, kind of oblivious looking, carefree, oh man, type of <laughs> picture. But then you have like hi-fi Monty and claw marks on the wall. like. I don't know that Monty is gonna be a, a good character, like a, a, a protagonist. He might be an antagonist. He might be part of the bad on this. And maybe that's the, maybe he's supposed to look bad, but he's actually good. I don't know. He's got a go, uh, yellow guitar. And that's really about it. You have half a curtain open here. Looks like half of this door is open, but I can't fully tell on that. The, the next one we go to that we'll really go back to is the Glamrock Freddy one. But, all right, that one will be fully open. So this one right here, you see it goes back to like almost a storage area. Like a back area. Maybe maybe this leads closer to the office that we saw in one of the trailers where we saw Moondrop initially. I don't know, Moondrop and Sodoroni. That's a big old plush as well over here. Reminds me of that big old Freddy Fazbear plush that I have. I can't make out what this game is though. Uh, I, I just, I do not know. So if you have any, any intuition on that. Looks like it's probably pretty fun, maybe. <laughs> With the colors, it looks, it looks almost like a GameStop logo, but I know it's not. <laughs> um, all right, so here we go. We got fan art on the wall. And uh, so I'm guessing Glamrock Freddy is really the popular one. Oh man, yeah. With with Glamrock Freddy, uh, you notice also there are bowling balls on the ground. I'm covering those up. Whoops, and, and I'm bowling pin where my chair is. Let's see if I can move that. Urgh, a duck. Yes, here you can see the bowling pin. So Freddy likes to bowl. I guess Freddy goes over to Bonnie Bowl and chills out with his buddy. And what else? The, the sidewall photo over here. This is the thing that really changes my mind. Uh, and I guess this too, like, 
Freddy looks more like a personable goofball as opposed to the the branded like point in the air with the helmet and like weird eyebrow type thing like <laughs> um, that that thing going on and notice also that the theme of the color carries over from like the bold the bold red and the blue that the others are green rooms but this is technically like a blue room <laughs> yeah he's got that mirror but that theme carries throughout that's that royal blue um, and then I don't know that the royal blue purple and almost like a, a Crim it's not quite a crimson, but uh, th those are the, the bolder color schemes for Glamrock Freddy. But this this plush looks really cute. <laughs> like I th the, the small ones are going to sell like crazy, I'm, I'm quite sure. Like, that's going to be huge. Uh, but Freddy with the microphone, as simple as possible, but yet uh, still still a complex character. Probably more to the, more to the picture than we see. Freddy's probably our best friend in this, and uh, we see... With the character, the action figure or whatever, where you have Gregory, I guess, hiding inside of the Glamrock Freddy character. that uh, He's probably your ticket to freedom on some of these parts. So I guess we'll see, though. Really interesting. Kind of a, a lit up bear over here. I don't even know. Who else is there? Can't really tell. <laughs> I mean, it almost looks like a, uh, almost looks like Dreadbear right here. I, I just, I don't know. So this right here, I'm looking at and this light up lamp, maybe. I don't know. Are these the old pictures from the old pizzeria? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But it looks pretty cool. All right. So that's that one right there and the doorway over here to the storage area or whatever that is or something worse. Then, okay, that's 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 for last. Let's see. Uh, this one this one right here. Sure. Yeah. Uh, this one is called West Arcade. And you see a few things here. Chica of the Sea. This is probably a food item. It looks almost like a movie, but if you read the uh, if you read the packaging on the Chica of the Sea food item in Help Wanted, it says a mysterious brined delight. And I don't know if this says I guess it says probably a brined delight. It doesn't say a mysterious brined delight, but um, that's something something to note there. Uh, can't fully tell. It could say something totally different too. I mean, I was thinking like it looks almost like a musical, you know? Like it's it's like, hey, this is our new movie, Chica of the Sea, based on the food or something. Uh, and then Moondrop over here, Sleepy Time Candy. Look how he looks like a Chad over here. Uh, he's got the second eye over here. Definitely an interesting character here, but uh, hmm. But yeah, Moondrop, one of the candies from, uh, I think, the DLC on Help Wanted. So I remember that for sure. All right, then uh, there's a rocket ride here. And uh, I don't know what this is. Let's see. Can we tell? Mm, there's an ATM on the wall. You see the, uh, you see the animatronics their decals on the wall here. So you have, um, yeah, here's here's Roxanne, here's Monty and Montgomery, <laughs> or Montgomery, and then uh, Glamrock Chica over here. Fazcade over here. So to the west of the arcade, you have this hallway. You have benches you can sit on while, you, while your kid rides the rocket ride, wastes all your money, and then you leave and don't actually see anything. Or, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, so I don't know if the lobby brings you in through here I don't know <clears throat> maybe you go left to a restaurant area so maybe you go this way to the restaurant maybe you go this way to the arcade and then this is the hub to everything else I don't fully know but this is a nice lobby area like it's almost like a movie theater nicely presented all that so anyway next one mini golf entrance because the title of the thing says mini golf entrance Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex and it's really, really well lit up. <clears throat> you see Party and Jam over here. 
We need a slam dunk contest. We need a Freddy Fazbear slam dunk contest with the jam. <laughs> Either that or some Freddy Fazbear grape jelly or something. But look at all these. Look at all these little Glamrock Freddy plush. They're just sitting there, right? Like, are are they secured down or behind something? It doesn't look like it. Like, are kids just going to take these and that's it? Like, is this place so ballin' or do you pay so much money that you can take all the Glamrock Freddy plush you can in your hands? Or is this <laughs> is this uh, enforced at all? Like, no, no taking these free plush on here that are screaming, take me? I don't know. I mean, it's part of this looks almost like iridescent. Like the, the eye makeup or whatever. But anyway, those will probably be uh, pretty popular items in real life, those plush, I'm sure. All right, uh, but this, uh, I don't really see too much here other than just an extravagant lit up display and jam and party. All right, I guess that one's it for now. And then uh, let's go back to this one right here. This one, this one is the curious one. And let's see if there's anything here. Ah, there's nothing here. All right. Well, that was it. No. <laughs> um, so this one right here is is super interesting because you have like a, a totally dismantled or crushed, without the beak, Glamrock Chica. And this one is called Sewer. You have a big old grate here, and that makes sense. Like that's a big old sewer. I wonder about the scale on this, but it's a stinking big sewer if that's the case. Maybe that big old vat underneath on that first trailer. Maybe that connects to it. I don't know. But also there's this open pipe here. I don't know what's piping out here. They're either waste or maybe Glamrock Chica was you know, transmitted through this or something. I don't know, but I'm, th I'm thinking just, you know, spitballing here. Uh, maybe Monty tore the mess out of Chica's beak because she didn't get what he wanted. And maybe Monty is the uh, antagonist here. Maybe someone took over Monty and it's not really Monty. It's not that laid back gator. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's Glitch Trap or, uh, uh, what is it, Spring Bonnie Man, I guess is the, uh, I don't know, but I guess everyone calls glitch, uh, calls that character Glitch Trap now. You see the green leopard and the pink zebra on the other leg and just torn the mess up. Good grief. Wow. What happened there? And and can you see if there are any other animatronics? Because it looks like, looks like they're, they're scrap parts for sure. There's a lot torn up here. This is a mess. That's a mess. Not a big old salvage area. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that really, but um, whether she was corrupted or destroyed or you know what she did to to get there, huh? I don't know. Maybe maybe Monty's the victim and is being overtaken by. Uh, by glitch trap, and then Monty destroys Glamrock Chica and presumably Roxy. I don't know. Maybe she's just maybe she just took off her beak because she thought it would look better, and it didn't work out the way she thought. And she is just thinking about how she has to pay to get her beak put back on, and she's not happy about it. Uh, or maybe she. Maybe she did a backflip from that pipe and just landed all wrong on her beak and it just like crushed her beak and then it's destroyed for life. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so we'll see how this plot plays out. There are a lot of things to go through here. I wonder why one light is red, one light is n not on. If this is a repair area, if she'll be repaired and there's nothing really to this picture. But this was the last one that was shown uh, as, a, as a teaser for the $50,000 donation mark on Daco's stream. So I'm estimating that this is pretty significant. And there's probably something telling about what's happening here and whether Vanny did this. Vanny and Vanessa, maybe Vanny is... I don't know. What, what, a, what, what a twist. What, what a twist that would be if Vanny were actually on her side. Uh, maybe Vanessa's on her side. Maybe Vanessa's not on her side, but Vanny is. I, I don't know. I would guess probably not for Vanny. Just by the, the mask from the corn maze and security breach. Estimating, well, she's probably in cahoots with Glitch Trap. So I think that's probably the one thing we, we do know. But I'm just trying to think, 
If there's anything that could be different, what could it be and why? So anyway, we'll find out, huh? Security breach, no release date yet as of this video, but hopefully soon, and hopefully this is an extremely well done game, well thought out, well programmed, well tested, and uh, you know, to market, hopefully this is an extremely well polished and phenomenal presentation. Uh, I thought Security Breach was extremely well, or I thought um, Help Wanted was extremely well done outside of those bugs that, that could have been fixed a little more readily, I guess, uh, up front. But um, man, that was, that was a really well done game. Really well done. Um, I mean, in terms of the, the quality of that game, that was, I would say, the best in the series. So, uh, and you can put whichever one is your favorite or which one you think was the best done of the series so far. Um, I mean, in terms of fun or whatnot, I still like Freddy in Space 2. I still like Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Um, I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's World was kind of an easy, like, hey, not a whole lot to do, not a whole lot to strategize, but still, you know, a pretty fun, laid-back game. I, I don't know. So, <sighs> we'll see what happens. We'll see about Scott's solo projects, too. I'm sure those will probably be pretty fun, too. So, all right. So, anyway, that's... Uh, that's everything here relating to those images and we'll see uh, what happens in uh, the future here same blue eyes as the picture in the chica or no no you can't even see your eyes there where can you see your eyes yeah here the cindy lopper picture there blue eyes she's got blue eyes in this one huh can't really tell on that one I guess that's that's a more cartoony depiction but anyway we'll see we'll see about Montgomery my my estimation is Montgomery is probably not the most balanced here with all the claw marks either I mean Montgomery could be on your side and just mad but you saw when all the animatronics are like breaking through the gates it makes me think that we're gonna have to escape somehow or I don't know maybe escape uh, on a go-kart or a rocket ship who knows I know people who do know if they've gotten that far in the programming, <laughs> but we'll see. All right, so thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully this wasn't boring or whatever, uh, but that's that's my little walkthrough on what I think of these pictures. It's a long video, too, so anyway, man, it's it's not been the best of weeks, for sure, but <laughs> I'm still here, you're, you're still here, and uh, I hope you're doing well, all right? So um, I will check you all later. And also, I guess one more thing. You know that, um, hold on. Let me see if I can load this up. Uh, how do I do this? Let's see. Um, 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 um. Get my um count up here on this. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. When I was doing TV and radio, I got my um usage down near zero and I was much more proud about it. But when I'm kind of just winging it a little more. I say um a whole lot more. So, <laughs> here. Uh, yeah. I zoom in here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, look at this. Okay, so, um, let's see if I can get this over here. This? show yeah look at this um so i made that t-shirt i remade it in roblox so you can you can buy that in the store for fairly cheap i think it's like 10 cents on my end i think is is what it what it costs i think it costs a little more if you want to wear it or whatever but i made shorts that are kind of close they're maybe a little bit longer than i was expecting they actually look better on the uh, the blockier legs or whatever. But if you want to add me on Roblox, I'm real DJ Sturf because some, uh, someone took uh, DJ Sturf. So just put real DJ Sturf. But I'm trying to make uh, I'm trying to make a few things on here, mostly maps. Just seeing how Roblox uh, deals with programming and all that. So I have a few that I've been working on and. Uh, I haven't had a huge block of time to finish a lot of this stuff. Ignore the real DJ Stairs place. That's just like a default map that I had, and I didn't do anything on this. But the uh, the obstacle course here and all that. Uh, but I'll probably do a stream where we can play. And basically groups of six. And hopefully this is a pretty fun scavenger hunt. I didn't program anything past just hiding the items or placing the items. But um, 
but I'll, I'll figure that out. I have another few games in mind in terms of quick games I want to develop. I think it'll just be fun for little streams or activities or whatever. And I know Roblox is free, so it's not like Tower Unite where you have to buy you know, a $20 game in order to play the same game that I'm playing. So anyway, uh, let's go back to the logo screen. Here you go. All right. So hopefully Security Breach is fun, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll check you all later. So peace, God bless you, have a great day, and that's about it. Yeah.